percent. The other interesting thing is the number of gambling activities. So if you are a problem gambler, a lot of you, you have played and you play on a lot of different things. Um, and that's another way of finding out that there are problems there. In Great Britain, the rates of problem gambling amongst internet players are higher at 5.3% than in the general population. Why is that? Are problem gamblers attracted to the internet? A lot of my patients don't have a computer. They already sold it a long time ago. So they are playing in the bookmakers down the street. But this is a fascinating piece of uh, information that I think needs to be looked at further. <coughs> the sample was small and more research is needed to see if these findings can be replicated in larger samples. Until that happens, this is just an interesting piece of information, not a fact. The British Gambling Prevalence Survey looked at nearly 8,000 individuals and found out that 35.5 million adults in England had gambled in the past year. It, without including the national lottery, the percentage is lower at 56%. What this survey showed is that there is a significant increase from previous years in sports betting at bookmakers, in scratch cards, in online gambling, and in electronic gaming machines. It looked at and noticed there was an association with higher rates of problem gambling in people who were single, separated and divorced. And that the prevalence was lowest in the least deprived areas and highest in the most deprived areas. A lot of this is logical, but it's good to have it actually explained and shown. Problem gambling was highest amongst the unemployed. Now, whether it's because they've lost their jobs because of their gambling, or whether they had a tendency to gambling because they had a tendency to be unemployed is a different matter. These are associations, not causation. As I said earlier, the prevalence of problem gambling in England, in the UK, was 0.9%. That is an equally 451,000 problem <coughs> gamblers who are adults in our country. A lot of people who work in our business suggest that the rates are significantly higher and that they haven't been shown properly by the prevalence survey. But what I would like to say is that the, the surveys in 1999 and 2007 were very similar at 0.6%. So probably this is a good representation of the amount of people who are in need of help at the moment. I think I, I mentioned earlier, or I was introduced as, as the director of the National Problem Gambling Clinic. This is the clinic in London, in Soho, and we have uh, now over a thousand patients on our books. We started quite recently in 2008, and our referral rates now are between 10 and 15 new patients every week of the year and this has been going for weeks and weeks and weeks. So very soon it will be 2,000, 3,000 patients we will have on our books. It's the first national health service, it's the first public health service in the country and it's um, located in central London and we work mainly face to face but we do some remote work as well. This is the team at the last conference last year. There are more people than this, but those were on stage. I won't spend a long time talking to you about treatment options, but I would like to tell you that we have both psychological packages with 
cognitive behavioral therapy um, in group form, but also for people who are very, very unwell, psychiatrically unwell, with other mental illnesses. Uh, we also provide individual work, or people who have had severe trauma and who are feeling too vulnerable to work in a group setting. We also provide family therapy, support and work for every single patient who comes through. And we also provide separate treatment for any carer, relative or spouse of people who have a problem to come and get treatment from us without the problem gambler needing to be in treatment. We also have free money management sessions for everybody. So I insist that everyone who comes sits with a money management person and clears their debts or learns how to put in, pro in process some clearing of, of, of the debt and understanding of finances. We see primarily three different types. Ones who have inherited the predisposition to gamble from parents, grandparents who have a biological predisposition, There's something in their DNA that is causing them to gamble. And these people have started very early, around the ages of eight or nine at school. And they're the ones who used to spend their lunch money on gambling instead of using it to eat. And sometimes we see them after 20 years of solid gambling. The other type is a person who's had a very difficult early upbringing with emotional, physical or sexual abuse bullying at school, divorce of parents, death of a parent, all of these are possibilities and there are many more I haven't listed. There's a lot of low self-esteem and these are another category. And the third category are people who start late in life because of a trauma, such as the death of a loved one, or the birth of a sick child, and they often feel suicidal and they often gamble to forget, to escape their worries, even if for a short while. And lastly, I just wanted to mention a charity called Gambling Confirm that I am starting in England and it will be there to help raise the profile of problem gambling as a public health issue in Great Britain and Europe. It will advocate on behalf of problem gamblers and fundraise for our clinic which is in real need of extra funds. But it will also work across European at a higher level across European standards and will advise at any country and will work with any country in trying to raise the issue of problem gambling in the eyes of government and policy makers. That's it. I was quite quick, I hope.